Okay, I thought I'd show you a few tips and tricks that I'm doing to the old um, carrot boat, or whatever we're going to call it. Um, James says Tangerine, was it Tangerine Dream or something? Anyway, let's start off with a few things that we've done that you've probably noticed, but I'm just going to go through anybody else if they're new to the channel. Um, okay, 9.9 .9 Mercury, we fitted. I watched someone the other day just to show you something. He said, oh, down here you have to lift this lever up, this one here. To lift the engine up which is correct but i wouldn't do it with my finger if you just put this your throttle into gear not not started of course sorry all right and then your engine will just lift up it's in locked position you see when that when that's in neutral it's in locked position and the engine will not lift okay well as you're going along when you put it into first forward gear the engine becomes unlocked because if you hit something the engine will automatically move up anyway so let's lock him in that position focus first well one of the first jobs new anoid okay this attracts any salt water so it doesn't go into the engine and damage it and then you have to flush afterwards as well of course next job was the plug a new plug in the bottom drain plug Fitted nicely, a bit of um, gasket glue around it, or whatever you want to use. Then I fitted another plug. These are quite handy because the more you screw it in, the more they swell the rubber, so it'll seal beautifully. Uh, that one, which is the uh, more than what the hell they call that? I did remember a video. Yep, yeah, transducer. Now that was a bit of a pig because that screwed through to stainless steel. That bust two drills until I eventually got through, so I had to make the side off small and go a bit bigger. The best way to do that, if you're going through stainless steel, is nice and slow as possible, and WD-40 and a couple of sharp drills, and you will get through, okay? So that was that job, what we got now. And then we got a couple of grab rails I fitted. I'll show you them. And these are not going anywhere. I know they go around the cleats at the back here, but it doesn't matter because we're not going to use them. So that was that, two of those. There we go, that's in focus, then. Okay. And then, move the oars. Two rod holders. And I've had these years. Uh, and they wouldn't actually fit, because this is a 25mm bar, and these are made for 20, 21mm, 22mm. So I just ground them down, just used a um, Dremel, and just made the gap slightly bigger, and made the ovals slightly bigger, quite easy to do. And they don't go anywhere, they're fitted beautifully. Okay, next job I've ordered these of cane. These are two stainless steel, uh, I don't know what they call them, hook eyes, eyes, whatever. And they're going to go through here in the suspension. And they're going to be bolted in like that. I'm going to have to put some grease on because they might, they might interfere, or interfere, they might corrode. I'm not too sure how it works with galvanized and stainless steel. And they'll go through there and they'll line up perfectly with see that the hole because I want them the straps to go through these and I bought an extra one for the front. There you go, look at that. Now this you couldn't have asked for a better fit. This is a what they call a 12 mil, I think it's 12 mil gauge on the screw. And I started screwing it in here and it just took and went straight through. I did grind a bit off, otherwise it would have been too long, and then this door wouldn't, this flap wouldn't open. Okay, and that is for just a, a it's almost like a small rail for, well, not rail, is it? Okay, whatever. You know what I mean. Okay, what's next? <clears throat> I've got two of these on order, because these are okay, except they're not waterproof. They're just your standard dry well hopefully it's going to be dry but yeah, there's no seal on them i've ordered two of those in black to go here and i'll show you why okay so it came like this and in there if i can drop you again there's all the space so we're going to give it a clean look all you could sleep in there 
So yeah, we're going to give it a clean and we're going to put those two in and they're going to be for like tattle and bits and bobs, even some cooking equipment, whatever we need. What else we've got to do? Um, I'm trying to think. That seat, I will make an underpart for it so we can access it and put stuff in the seat underneath because that's a waste of space as well. Okay, yeah, I mentioned that, which is the fish finder. So this is this is self-contained. I put a battery in there and made this in a previous video. So we have a light. Oops, a bit too bright. Okay, inside here. I'll show you. Oops, it's in the way. I'll cut that bit out. Here's a battery. And we've got some stuff to put some fish and tattle in if we need. Okay. And off um, crawfish or what they call them um, conads you call them in America conads cronads so we do a bit of them the box there is for the electronics that's coming a new switch is coming because we're gonna have lights and bits and bobs that we can fit and what we need um, I don't know if we're gonna have a battery I don't think there's a charge on the motor also gonna fit this to the front but what I'm gonna do I just drilled two holes now. Oh, I think it keeps getting in the way of the camera. Just drilled two holes very close to this part here. And now what I do is count because I can't hold the camera. I'm going to count to sink it. And I'll show you in a sec. Okay, count to sunk, and then I'm going to fit this to the bow. Okay, so I just drilled two small pilot holes, and then line them up. Put the glue off. Not the glue. The um, sticky thing. There we go. I'll just screw them down. There you go. And you're probably thinking it's the wrong way around because I want it to face that way as we're going along so you can see what's going on and fishing and everything else. But I've got a swivel top on this and I want it to fit perfect on here. But I'm also, I would, word of caution, I would tether the GoPro to something like one of the cleats or something just in case. But I'll show you one fitted. Family tripod. Uh, so there you go, and then there we go. But I still put a, um, a tether on it anyway, just to make sure. You see that? Yeah. Right. Brilliant. So you can put it anywhere you want. So it, as you see. what I mean by I had to countersink you see countersunk them down so that this will fit over otherwise it wouldn't go in either way around it doesn't matter which way forward or backwards there's also other ones which I think I've got I might just have a look at that so you could use something like that but I can't you'd have to put I'd have to get another swivel separate swivel because there's no swivel on this one, but the rubber stops it from coming out. It locks into, into place. You could cut this out, or I think you can buy a rubber, a locking rubber for the GoPro anyway. So you put that in there, it tethers around the handle, and away you go. But yeah, so there we go, pretty good. Chuff with that, it shouldn't come out, and it shouldn't go anywhere. Line it all up, tighten them up. Ready to go. And on these stays, to keep the boat down, the back end down with a strap, I'm going to measure, what is it, 350 mil into the centre of the hole. We'll do the same the other side, and I'll show you when, when we're finished. <laughs>
There we go. We're going to do a slight modification um, because the not these. I wind that. I wind that. You don't want to see me winding up. And what it is? I'll show you what we've got to do. Oh, I'm all over the top. Right, I'll tighten up in a bit. Um, and what it is, I'll show you. So the idea is that's going to be the hook and the strap that goes over the boat to keep it in position. All right. The trouble is, the strap is massively long, so I'm going to cut it down and rejoin it. But the other problem is, let me just show you that. There we go. So we've got all that. Then we get to the ratchet, which is fine. And then on the other end, you've only got a little stumpy bit. About what 30, 40 centimeters long. So I'm gonna cut this from here, or to undo it. And then I'm gonna take some of this and I'm gonna restitch it so this actual lines up in the middle of the boot. Okay, so it lines up round about here. And that way you haven't got this great big clump of metal that's in the side of your boat. Uh, and then either, if because this is plastic, it doesn't really matter, but it does. Uh, but if it was fiberglass, you'd know about it. Okay, so that's what the job is, and that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and a like and a subscribe. We'd really appreciate that, and we'll catch you, hopefully, next time either on the water or somewhere near.